Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is Carol Reese and I'm a practice advisor and a registered nurse here at the SRNA. Um, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the strength, sorry, I'd like to acknowledge that this presentation is being held on Aboriginal land and recognize the strength, resilience, and capacity of Treaty 4 and Métis people of this land. Our topic today is the new uh, registered nurse entry level competencies and the registered nurse practice standards. Uh, I have two guest speakers today. One hasn't quite made it here yet, but she should be here soon, and that's Barbara McDonald, who's a registered nurse and a practice advisor as well. And Donna Marin is here beside me, also a registered nurse and a practice advisor. Before we get started, I have a couple of notes for how you can engage throughout the presentation. As a viewer of this webinar, you'll be able to hear and see the presentation only panelists will be able to speak throughout the presentation. If you have a question, please add them to the chat sections. We'll be monitoring this area for questions throughout the webinar. And these questions will be answered either live or via typed response. If you wish to send your question anonymously, just click the check uh, box in the bottom of the Q&A screen. We'll be recording this webinar and it may be posted to the SRNA website for those who are not available to join today to view later. An email will be sent to you with the link for the evaluation and we hope you take a couple of minutes to complete the survey. So now that we have the house, sorry, housekeeping items taken away, I will turn the microphone over to first Donna. Thanks, Carol. So it's my pleasure to speak to you today about the Registered Nurse Practice Standards. Um, I just want to point to a few things out about the history of how these got developed and um, then we'll be able to have some discussion and uh, I'll answer any questions that people might have. So um, in order to really make sense of how the practice standards were developed, I'll just briefly talk a little bit about how the registered nurse entry-level competencies were developed. Um, that was done at a national level and um, work proceeded with two representatives um, from the SRNA um, who participated in developing those. Um, there was representatives from all the jurisdictions across um, Canada and in the territories. And so um, that work was um, kind of aligned with um, the time frame for when our um, standards and competencies needed to be uh, revised anyway. So because that project was um, um, underway and separated out the entry level competencies um, from the um, current version of the standards and foundation competencies for registered nurses that uh, are in place uh, and that registered nurses are held accountable to. We um, you know, had lots of discussions as a regulatory body about whether the standards would be linked in in the same document as previously done or whether they would be broken out uh, into their own standalone document. And so um, we clearly decided that, that they were appropriate and um, necessary to, to break out um, because we really wanted to honor um, the, the standards that everyone was held accountable to in that separate document. Um, we wanted also um, to be able to, um, I guess, kind of keep the the practice standards uh, intact in terms of the five practice standards that exist in the document are um, the original wording. Um, and then we wanted to kind of build some indicators into the document to help uh, registered nurses and others who are interested in registered nurse practice to understand what activities or um, skills would people be demonstrating in order to um, show that they're upholding those standards. So when um, we look at the document, I'm just going to have a little look through here. Um, um, the introduction that's in there really talks about um, the public contribution that people made. We, we put those standards out for review um, so that registered nurses and other stakeholders um, could give us their opinions on it. 
um, and we really wanted to um, um, keep the client at the center of all of those um, statements. And so um, one of the things that really is important for me to point out is uh, that no agency directive, whether that's a policy, procedure, or a guideline, can relieve a registered nurse of the professional accountability for their own actions and decisions regarding the standards. Um, so there are some overarching principles that are highlighted in the standards document, and then it does launch into each individual standard. And so, um, as I said earlier, we, we needed to build in, um, once the document was separated out from the competencies that used to be paired with the standards, um, we really needed to break out some indicators. Um, so those are all listed underneath each individual practice standard. Um, so standard number one still deals with professional responsibility and accountability. Um, and there are 11 um, ways that we've kind of um, decided that a registered nurse could um, demonstrate they're upholding that standard. Then standard number two still is about knowledge-based practice. And uh, standard three, ethical practice. Um, standard four is still service to the public. And standard five is about self-regulation. And so um, we encourage uh, our members to have a really good look at this document because as you can see on the um, on the initial cover when we were showing it um, these are going to be effective um, for all of our members to um, be held accountable to on October 3rd of 2019 which is uh, coming up uh, 30th uh, October 30th of 2019 which is coming up pretty quickly so we have had some questions um, from folks about um, continuing confidence. So most of our members have already uh, registered for the next registration year um, because the employer paid deadline um, was actually yesterday. And so um, most of, of our folks would have used the um, document that's currently in um, uh, in practice, which would be the standards and foundation competencies from 2013. And so that's perfectly acceptable. Anybody uh, down the road that maybe gets audited for the registration year, um, if their um, continuing competence refers to the, to the old practice standards um, that, that expire when these take over in uh, October 30th, there's absolutely no problem at all. If people delved into um, these, these practice standards and quote them, um, as I'm going to be doing because uh, I have not registered yet, um, I pay my own registration and so I'll be using these new practice standards because of the time frame that, um, that I'm working on uh, wrapping things up and creating my new um, assessment and learning plan. So, um, the practice standards themselves, um, you know, really are kind of that um, base of, of practice. It's something that, um, you know, we, we want people to explore. We're always happy as practice advisors if we get questions from folks, um, you know, regarding any of the content or the meaning or how it would apply to people's uh, everyday clinical practice or their practice as an educator, uh, manager, or someone that's developing policy or, or completing research. Um, because it does apply to every um, every registered nurse in every domain of practice. Um, so Barbara McDonald has joined us here and uh, I'm going to let her talk a little bit about the um, RN entry level competencies and the process that was undertaken to develop those and then um, we'll certainly entertain any questions that people have. Well, thank you Donna You're and welcome. Carol. Um, I'm happy to be here today. I'm Barbara McDonald, Registered Nurse and Nurse Practice Advisor at the SRNA. And um, I'm really excited to see these standards and, and competencies um, uh, because we've been working on them for some time and it's nice to see them being brought to life with a, a date of October 30th. They have been posted on our website under proposed standards and proposed uh, 
entry level competencies because they've had to go through a process of uh, approval. And so this is the date that they're ready to go after a lot of consultation and work that's happened over the course of really probably two years, uh, all told. Um, I also want to take note of the cover. You can see on the side the competencies and standards. And on our website, you'll see a document. So it's under nursing resources. Um, and I don't know if you can navigate that way so they can see the screen, but under nursing practice resources, you'll see um, a chart that shows the where, where these documents fit in our big picture view. Uh, so under SRNA and then under, um, uh, am I in the right place? No, I'm not in the right place. About us, so over to governance, how we govern. There you go. And then, so there are a few layers. So then SRNA council on the right and read more. And then, uh, uh, on, at the very bottom, you'll see policy governance, and under there, and you'll see document de definitions and descriptions. And there's a chart. Um, yep. So you'll see where it fits in in the documents um, in our organization. So uh, at the very top there, Carol, you'll see it starts with the Registered Nurses Act, and that's where we have the authority to practice registered nursing in Saskatchewan. And then there are bylaws and also the code of ethics and standards and foundation competencies which we're moving from and then standards and competencies um, entry-level competencies so that's the level of um, importance <laughs> it, it forms a foundation these two documents form the foundation of our practice in saskatchewan based on that legislation and the bylaws so um, i donna and i worked on this chart uh, and it was put up last November, I think it was approved last November. So you can see how the on the right hand side that column describes how it all fits together. It's a little bit like having all the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. So I thought I'd draw your attention to that chart to see where where the things fall. And you'll see then if you scroll down uh, other discussions that we've had, there are council policies that are posted on our site and then guideline documents um, and then the level of approval. So SRNA council approves our guidelines. Um, and for example, we have guideline documents for um, medical assistance in dying. Um, there's a guideline for RN, uh, delegation from RN to MD to RN, those sorts of guideline documents. And that's the level of approval that's required for those documents to be put in place and operationalized in the, at the SRNA. So back to the standards in ELC. Can I just yeah. point out one thing while we're sure. here? Um, Carol, I'll just get you to scroll down. So you'll notice in the um, the statement here, currently RNNP practice standards and RNNP uh, ELCs exist and are in effect in Saskatchewan. That was one of the other motivating factors for the SRNA when they were looking at whether they would keep the practice, uh, the standards and foundation competencies put together in one document and, and just, you know, bring the, the new content forward or whether they would separate those out. And so there were a number of um, of reasons, and I omitted to mention that one, that we really wanted those to be aligned so that people, no matter what their category was, um, are looking at practice standards that are separate from the ELC document. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, the ELC document, or entry-level competencies, um, is uh, one that is now new to our organization from a registered nurse perspective. and. Um, but really, they were there already in the standards and foundation competencies before. So there have been processes over a number of years for having a national approach to these entry-level competencies, which inform things like our program approval processes for nursing programs. But instead of being separate, they were incorporated into our standards and foundation competencies. And now we have them in two documents, um, and it is probably more reflective of what's happening across Canada as well, every other jurisdiction had the ELC separate uh, to begin with. However, they dovetail, they work side by side, They're, they are aligned. Um, and you'll see when you look at both the standards and the ELCs, how they um, are interwoven and uh, reflect our practice across the schedule. So the entry level competencies then are, it's a national document that has been tailored ever so slightly, um, just in terms of formatting primarily, um, things like um, glossary terms also we were committed to having 
uh, honoring the reader by not having the, the terms, having the reader go look for those terms. Um, so in, right in the, in the entry level competencies, you'll see definitions that are incorporated with the source uh, right there in the year in an APA style. So, um, so there are some nuances that are Saskatchewan specific in these entry level competencies, but essentially it's a national document that it has been adopted um, and incorporated. So uh, the entry level competencies, we came together uh, over a period of 18 months. Um, and probably one of the first things that we did um, was look at how they're going to be presented. So it moved nationally from a, a document that was largely based on the uh, nursing process to um, a document that is now roles based. So um, this document has, we have nine roles. So RN as clinician, professional, communicator, collaborator, coordinator, leader, advocate, um, educator, and scholar. And um, this document represents the novice to expert continuum and forms the foundation upon which we have registered nurse practice in Canada. Um, so this document informs all kinds of processes, like I said before, uh, the um, nursing program approvals, RN programs uh, approvals, um, so that every registered nurse is prepared to this standard um, across Canada in the, the, the nursing schools, um, as an example. So, and the document does have a paragraph that says how, bullet points saying how the, how the ELCs are used. Um, so that's a worthwhile uh, portion to go to as well in the, in the background. So I think, is it higher up in the, in the background description maybe? Here, those bullet points. Yeah, my eyes say, let's see. <laughs> so academic program approval. Hmm. Someone's gonna have to help me because I don't have the screen close enough that I can see. Assessment of internationally educated applicants. Assessment of applicants for the purpose of re-entry into the profession. Input into the content and scope of entry uh, to practice exams. Practice advice and guidance to clinicians and public and employer awareness of the practice expectations of registered nurses. Right. So essentially, this is the foundation upon which we uh, form our practice and uh, ensure that we're upholding the standards um, and, and competencies for which registered nursing practice requires. So reading the context is, I would advise to do that so you can see where the ELCs relate. Um, and one of the, the key points also in this background document is that it talks about the client being um, the family, the individual organization. So even though it refers to the client throughout the um, competencies, it does not mean individual only. So keeping that in mind when you go through the, the competencies um, would be very important. So under each of the roles, um, you'll see all kinds of things that are, are very specific this time. So there are things like tra trauma-informed care, medical assistance in dying, uh, our response to the acknowledgement and response to the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, the opioid crisis. Opioid crisis. Um, lots of things that are very contemporary and specific to our practice right now. These uh, entry-level competencies are updated nationally. Right now, at this point, they're every five years. Uh, and given that it takes two years to roughly to uh, update them, the pro whole process of consultation and uh, updating and reviewing the literature and so on, uh, it will be about, I guess, uh, maybe three years before we start again <laughs> in the whole process. Um, but it, it has been a really great um, experience to come together nationally to to review these and update them. Um, and we had a very rigorous process around um, consultation, particularly in Saskatchewan. Um, of all the jurisdictions, we had the, the greatest amount of consultation every step of the way, including one survey monkey that maybe you participated in, um, where we had every uh, proposed um, competency and asked you to edit, revise, add feedback. And we had uh, over 250 responses to that very long um, survey, as you can imagine. So um, we've had lots of, and then focus groups and so on, where we had a sharing circle approach and had uh, public representatives, um, nurses, all kinds of people at the table to have a discussion about what do you think 
when you when you imagine an entry level nurse, what do you think about when you hear the word nurse as leader, nurse as so and so? So those focus groups, we went through the process of tell us what you think a registered nurse should be when we have these roles, and then we compared it at the end of the day against the the standards that were being proposed. So it was a really interesting experience to um, go into that. Yeah. So I think that's generally the overview around the entry level competencies. One of the ones that I even referred to yesterday was uh, about uh, there's a, some um, there's one of the competencies that talks about our responsibility as registered nurses in with respect to environmental uh, practices and things that are, are, are thinking about our um, our use of, of materials and resources. And uh, there's an, ex an example that I had a discussion with a nurse from Ontario last week around, uh, for example, there's an initiative to move from syringes to insulin pens in the hospital setting. And uh, they're talking about the um, infection prevention and control practices, of course. Uh, and I said also in our, our national entry level competencies, there's a piece around the environmental waste and landfills and so on. And so she was very um, excited to think about it from that context to be able to present that to the um, to the employers to think about how that uh, how how we can be responsible as registered nurses in thinking about that kind of use of resources. So I find that these competencies to be really exciting around our practice and and our way forward. Okay. Thank you, Barb. Uh, one of the things that I noticed in doing my uh, work with these, um, not to the degree that these ladies did, but I did a side-by-side -side comparison of our standards, our standards foundation competencies with the new standards. And what I found was uh, some of the statements or the indicators in the standards, the old standards, are actually um, put together. There might be two or three of them that are in the new standard, but it still is giving the same type of information. The standards have changed some mostly I think uh, becoming more relevant to what is actually going on in the workplace today. The ELCs I found were very easy to read. Um, I think they'll be a lot easier for our members to interpret, for the public to interpret, and for the employers as well, which will help give clarity to all stakeholders, which I think is something that has certainly been talked about before and something that people are asking for. So. Is, does anybody have any questions at this particular point in time about anything we've talked about? Anything you'd like us to expand on? You can just type us a message and we'd be more than happy to, to answer. These documents are up on the website. They are available right now, so you can certainly download them. They're in effect October 30th, but you can certainly start to uh, perusing them now because they are going to become the basis for which your practice is, um, um, I'll say judged, practice is assessed, assessed, thank yeah. you, evaluated. Yeah. 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 Any questions from anyone? And if at any time you have any questions, if you don't have anything now or you think of something later or you just don't want to put it out here with other people listening, you can certainly contact us here at the SRNA, the practice advisors. We'd be more than happy to uh, help you out and help you interpret it, bring, help bring some clarity if that's what you need. Mm -hmm. I think something that's also important to point out in the entry level of competencies is it was very, we were very thoughtful around our verbs. Um, so, um, when you're developing, analyzing, it, having a close look at what the verbs are under the competencies. Um, it, it's, it's, I don't mean to minimize anything, but it's not simply knowledge of or demonstrate knowledge of. It, it is a farther, a great depth around um, the, the complexity, the knowledge, skill and judgments uh, that are associated with that critical thinking um, in registered nurse practice. I, I don't know, Donna, in your work, if you can comment about how that relates, maybe even to the uh, um, CDMF, the collaborative decision-making framework, and how those things reflect registered nurse practice. Yes, I'd agree with you. When I read the entry-level competencies, certainly there are, you know, that, that high level of, of application of the knowledge 
to um, whatever practice people are in. Um, and so that is an expectation, certainly, and it's very clearly outlined uh, in the document. Mm -hmm. So the, the depth and breadth of, of registered nursing practice, I think, is reflected really well. Uh, one of the things that was, a, you know, some of the conversation was around that balance between entry level and more advanced. And had we had we gone too far, had we gone far enough when it, we were describing that entry level practice? and. Each time in that group, we come back to the fact that this is keeping in mind the novice to expert continuum. So that, uh, even though they're called entry level practice, it's still the foundation upon which we build our practice. Uh, so it, regardless of how long you've been registered nursing, going into these ELCs and figuring out which which things you're going to, well, which things apply most specifically to your area of practice and which things that you can build upon to always aim for a that excellence and moving moving forward and continually um, moving our practice forward in a, in a profession-led way. Um, so I'm excited to see the scholars and the education and research and so on, but they are written right now at, with language that reflects the entry level, um, but also enough flexibility to um, allow that sort of expert continuum as well. So I, I think, I think we, we put a lot of effort into making sure that we got it kind of we think right around that level of um, descriptors and and so on so um, that was an exciting part of the process too and so many great discussions across the country when we're putting these together um, every word is pretty you know we're, we're really specific about how it's how it's being conveyed so that I think is, is quite important and, and maybe there's an opportunity for you to think about um, for those who are online or those who are listening to the webinar later on about how it relates to your practice. Um, there was some question around, do we expect all registered nurses to be all of these things? You know, um, what if I'm an educator, am I gonna be as much a clinician and so on? Um, and we, we said that there are touch points throughout all of the competencies uh, and not that you might, not that you're involved in this area of practice all the time, but that you have that basic competency uh, and the ability to be able to do any any aspect of registered nursing practice. So I'm not sure if either of you have any comments on that, on the different roles and what you think around the entry-level competencies with respect to um, that. Now that we're in a roles-based approach, um, what implications do you think are, are a result of that shift to the roles-based approach? Yeah, I wonder if any of our um, of our audience has any questions about the roles-based approach or comment. You know, certainly I, I agree with your assessment that, you know, there may be touch points throughout all of those nine different roles um, that are outlined that come together into my own practice, right? And and you know, I think about um, opportunities there that people have to identify which ones of those really are key to their continued learning. Um, you know, given the role that they're in now, and that that doesn't mean that it's always going to be only those particular things, because roles change and evolve, or you move into other roles where you might use different combinations of those particular mm -hmm. um, competencies. Okay, it's pretty quiet. <laughs> so again, if you have any questions, you know, after you've reviewed them, anything you need some clarity on, certainly call the practice advisors here at the SRNA. We'd be more than happy to discuss uh, the standards and the ELCs with you. Um, I think we're going to close. Our next week's uh, web webinar topic is RN Specialty Practices, and Barb will be back to present that. Mm -hmm. um, if you've missed a webinar, you can view them on our SRNA Vimeo or YouTube channels. And I'd like to thank both Dawn and Barb for coming down today. And uh, we'll see you again next week, perhaps. Thanks for joining. Thanks very much.